Dear fellow coders, welcome to One Little Coder. In this video, we are going to learn about interpretable machine learning. This talk is going to be about, uh, this is how this talk is structured. So initial half of the stock is not going to have anything related to machine learning. And later on, we are going to increase the level of machine learning um, that are required to understand this talk. Uh, this talk is going to tell you about uh, interpretable machine learning, which is also known as explainable AI. Why is this interpretable machine learning required? How is it even relevant to me? And the types of interpretability, what like global, local. And then finally, we are going to look at interpretable machine learning with Python references. Specifically, we are going to talk about two different methods called Lime and SHAP. That is where you need to have um, ML understanding. But until that, you probably don't need even any ML. But I would also like to emphasize that even if you do not, even if you do not have any uh, machine learning skill or a technique, or you're not part of machine learning, still I think this talk will be relevant for you. That is what we are going to understand in the third section, uh, which is what how is it when relevant to me. So if you have any questions, uh, please let us know in the comments. Or uh, after the talk, you can get in touch with me and you can get to know the uh, answer. So this talk uh, is uh, heavily borrowed from this book called Interpretable Machine Learning, which is a very great book, made it open source, like free, sorry, uh, made it free by Christopher Molnar. So thanks so much, Christopher uh, Molnar, for making it um, completely free for us. And I hope um, uh, you, after this talk, um, after listening to this talk, if you're interested in the subject still, you should definitely go and check it out, this book. This is an amazing book. And it is so kind of the author to make it completely free and available uh, to everyone on the internet. So of course, every talk begins with a joke. So let's make a joke. So what is this joke? So person A asks person B, who is probably, let's say, a data scientist or machine learning engineer, oh, this is your machine learning system. And um, what does it do? So person B says, yeah, yeah, you actually pour a lot of data into this big pile of linear algebra. And then that collects the answers on the other side of it. So it's like a funnel. You pour data, and then you have linear algebra, and then it collects the data, uh, sorry, answer on the other side. And person A asks, what if the answer is wrong? So person B says, oh, no, simple. You just you just stir the pile and start looking for more answers, which is kind of a, an insider joke within our data science community. There are a lot of data scientists sometimes what they do is if they don't get um, the right answer of what they were initially looking for, they start for more answers because ultimately they want to show something, right? Every Everyone tries to impress their boss and then everyone wants to show something. So even if you don't have what you're looking for, you still try to show something. And that is that is how uh, some people do it, which is not entirely right. And that is what this joke is about. Now let's move on to the serious subject. So what is interpretable machine learning or explainable AI? Interpretable machine learning refers to the methods or models uh, that make um, a particular machine learning systems prediction or behavior understandable to human beings. So if you have built a model, or machine learning model or artificial intelligence model, a statistical model, whatever you would like to call it. If that model, you understand what is the prediction and how is that prediction made? Like what is, how, based on what that prediction is made. Uh, so if you have understanding about that particular thing, then that is called interpretable machine learning. So you have a machine learning system and you have the ability to interpret or explain how that machine learning algorithm or model is making prediction. And that is what we are calling as interpretable machine learning, and then the buzzword for us, explainable AI, also known as XAI. So that is what IML is all about. Why IML is required? You might you might ask, right? OK, we have got machine learning, but why is even IML required? So before even we move on to IML, so let me give you a very brief overview about why, why are we in this situation that interpretable machine learning, you're talking about interpretable machine learning. Why is even not machine learning interpretable? That's, that's the first question, right? If you separately need something called interpretable machine learning, why machine learning is not interpretable. So basically, if you if you want to visualize a plot, a graph, as the complex complexity of the machine learning models that we build, the algorithms that we build, the explainability or the interpretability of the algorithms decreases. So it has a negative correlation with the interpretability and uh, accuracy or uh, complexity of the algorithm has a negative correlation. So if you want more accuracy, then you want more complicated model, but more the complicated model is, lesser the interpretability of the model. And that is why we have the necessity of having a separate uh, stream called interpretable machine learning. So now, why interpretable machine learning is required? First, most important thing is fairness. 
So you want people to believe uh, that the model or technology that you have built in is unbiased. So you 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 want people to know that you have built a solution, or you yourself want to know that you have built a fair solution. You have built a fair machine learning model that is completely unbiased. It's not going to discriminate people based on their race, gender, religion, country. So it's not going to do any of those things because you have built an unbiased model, and that fairness is only possible. That fairness is ensured only if you understand. what is happening behind that prediction second thing privacy so a lot of data scientists usually get very excited happy about ex- uh, any data that they can get but the truth is sometimes we need to draw a line and say that okay data beyond this is not ethical data beyond this is going to violate somebody's privacy and i'm not going to touch that data and that is what we call a sensitive data so if you want to ensure that sensitive data is not used no privacy is violated in the machine learning algorithm that you have built then you need interpretable machine learning to understand how this machine learning prediction is happening the next thing is reliability so any solution that you build has to be reliable by your stakeholders otherwise your solution is not going to be uh, trustworthy so reliability and trustworthiness are two most important things so that when you build something you are actually part of your data science team our machine learning team is actually part of a very small organization right there is a huge organization and within that there are a lot of business functions and within that there is a small team that is going to make this prediction and if you want to fit very well within this entire ecosystem you need to ensure that people trust you you need to ensure that people uh, trust or uh, rely on your model so for you to ensure that you need to have interpretable machine learning the next thing is establishing a causal relationship so if you have made a prediction let's say there is a cre- uh, credit called uh, credit card default model prediction so if you have made a prediction now your business is going to ask you okay and what what do you think are driving factors that drive uh, whether a particular person is going to default or not default so that that information is something that you would get only if you have uh, only if you have um, causality established and for that you need to have interpretable machine learning and then the next thing is that we just discuss which is trust and then finally uh, if a company doesn't care about any of these things there is one thing that they would definitely care about which is legality and legality is nothing but uh, whether you are uh, whether the model uh, that uh, you have built uh, can be explained because uh, based on gdpr which is how widely uh, implemented across europe uh, there is a clause called right to explanation right so if if uh, i have applied for a loan let's say i am in europe and then i have applied for a loan and my loan has been rejected so i have every right to ask why my loan has been rejected so this uh, question when when it is being asked by a customer a company cannot simply say that oh no sorry we don't have that information because ultimately an algorithm made the decision we cannot explain it so they cannot simply say that because Uh, according to gdpr you have to have a, uh, an explanation and every one who is involved in that has that right to get explanation so for legal reasons sometimes you need to have interpretable machine learning and um, to be honest this is one thing that a lot of companies care more about any of the above mentioned reasons so simply saying an interpretable model when we say an in- interpretable machine learning model is something that can tell you that can explain you why a particular decision has been made whether uh, a loan has been rejected or whether somebody's visa has been rejected whether somebody's job offer has been rejected why a particular decision has been made so that a human being can intervene and then judge whether the machine learning model is actually learning and then making the decision or it has some inherent bias that we don't want that machine learning model to have so that can be done only if you have interpretability within the machine learning model okay let's uh, let we we saw a lot of reasons uh, but uh, let's look at a reason uh, let's look at an example what happens uh, if something goes wrong like what really happens and the example is from one of the most trusted value, uh, brand value brand in the world which is apple okay uh, so uh, this person is called uh, dhh and he is very well uh, known in the developer community technology community he is the creator of ruby on rails that powers almost like millions of uh, web applications on the internet so what has happened is dhs and dhs wife both of them have apple card so few um, probably like a year a uh, few years back apple launched a card called apple card which is a credit card that apple launched in tie up with uh, goldman sachs 
So both DHH and DHS wife have Apple Card, and both of them are working. Both of them are making their money. Both of them uh, handle their own account. And when DHS wife, uh, they what they found out is just DHS wife has less credit limit than DHH, which means DHS can get a uh, more loan, uh, more uh, spend more using Apple Card. than his wife which he thinks is unfair and which is right and when they try to reach apple uh, to get um, the result uh, to to hear from apple customer care what 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 is happening why is the credit limit for two person who makes same amount of money um, almost and uh, does similar tax returns live in the same place and uh, why their credit limit is different but the problem is now apple customer care says that it is the algorithm that has made this decision and we don't know how that algorithm has made the decision and that has really really made dhh angry and then he has made this tweet and this tweet has gone hugely viral and even it got support from apple co-founder steve wozniak and a lot of people jumped in to say that now one it has to be uh, apple has to ensure that their algorithm is unbiased and then the way they can ensure that their algorithm is unbiased that they are not Get biased against women entrepreneurs or women uh, working women or in fact women for that matter is by explaining how a particular prediction is made how a particular credit limit is set and this is a classical example of how if you do not have interpretable machine learning a brand as big as apple can have uh, its brand value tarnished it was a huge pr issue for apple a lot of news articles were written about it and there a lot of people uh, spoke against um, uh, this bias inherited bias within this uh, credit limit that apple and uh, goldman sachs has implemented and um, this is one such example where you don't want your brand to have this impact right like let's say you are you are a ceo or you are somebody who works in such a company you don't want to see that uh, this kind of news happening about your company where a huge technologist who is very very, very well respected uh, in this domain uh, speaks against your program so it's very important interpretable machine learning is very important for you to establish trust in the society and then make sure that everyone believes or everyone knows how a particular algorithm decision is made let us move on now you might wonder like how is it even relevant to me if you are a ceo or maybe i'm going to care about brand value but how is it relevant to me first i'm going to talk about three different roles one is a data scientist the other one is a technologist who is like part of our technology team and then the other one is like no one i think normal human being okay so first of all if you are a data scientist everyone likes to take pride in their work i could be a carpenter i love what i make i could be a tailor i love what i make i could be a baker i love what i make the same way if i am a data scientist i just love what i make because that's my work that fulfills me but what is the point of taking pride in your work if you have no clue about what is your work how a particular prediction is made you cannot simply say that the algorithm made the decision right so what then what is your role so there is an insider joke within data science community that a lot of people actually say there are some kinds of data scientists who just all they do is import scikit learn that's what they do scikit learn is a very popular machine learning framework and a lot of people what simply do is they just import scikit learn it's, it's an insider joke it just simply says that uh you simply blindly follow something without understanding what is happening so if you are a data scientist who would like to take pride in your work that you do you need to have understanding about why a particular prediction is made and that is why interpretable machine learning is very relevant to you okay let's say i am not a data scientist i am not a machine learning engineer but maybe i am a technologist i'm just a team member who is part of uh, you know a big organization how is it even relevant to me very simple if your team or uh, your broader team business function produces something and that is going to be deployed across your organization or for all your customers then if something goes wrong in that it's not just the data scientist who build that it's not just the data science team it is the entire team the broader the broader team extended team is going to get impacted and everyone is going to ask question and your team's reliability your team's trustworthiness is going to be put at stake so if you don't want to do that then whenever there is a model built by your data science or machine learning team you need to pay attention to understand how a particular prediction is made whether the data science team is capable enough to explain or interpret uh, what the prediction is about and that is why interpretable machine learning is quite relevant to you so oh, maybe let's say you are not a data scientist you are not even a technologist you're just a normal human being you're, you're just a common man you're a normal human being and how is it relevant to you 
this is the most important reason why you should care about machine learning interpretable machine learning there are machine learning systems coming into our social system social machine everywhere you would see these days there is a machine learning system whether you want to get a loan there is a machine learning system whether um, uh, you want to get a passport or a visa there could be a machine learning system there are anti criminal uh, cctv monitoring systems there so if you are part of a social system and there is a machine learning model in the social system um, like hr department there is a machine learning model that is going to decide whether you will get a job or not so if you are part of a social system and there is uh there is a machine learning model then the data point is you or i or somebody you care about like how it happened in dhs case it is somebody he cares about and that person is being uh, there is a model that that is biased against that person so now it is your responsibility and my responsibility to ensure that the machine learning model that is deployed in the social system is not biased against either you or me or somebody we care about or some marginalized a uh, group of the society so that they don't become further marginalized so that you, it is our responsibility to ensure that the model the machine learning model that has been deployed is fair it is unbiased it is ethical and it is not going to discriminate any marginalized group and that is why interpretable machine learning is most important most relevant to all of us on this planet because machine learning systems are going to penetrate into every social system and we need to ensure that it is unbiased and the only way we can ensure that is by having interpretable machine learning in place i hope i've convinced you that interpretable machine learning is relevant to you and if you are convinced and now we are going to see how it is and what it is first of all interpretable machine learning can be categorized into two broad categories one is to say that okay it can be either model specific or model agnostic the other set of category is it can be either global interpretability or local interpretability so let's look at model specific so there could be a method that could help you explain a particular model that is model specific so now let let's take linear regression the coefficients of a linear regression is going to help you explain a linear regression model in fact for that matter you can now take the linear regression model's coefficient put it in microsoft excel and then you can just add a formula and then you would get the same prediction output so this is an example for a model specific interpretability so this explanation that coefficient that you took or this methodology that you followed is only applicable for that particular model and now you cannot take a random forest and explain it like that so that is where model agnostic methods come into picture model agnostic interpretable machine learning methods help you explain models irrespective of what model it is so it could be an xg boost model it could be a light gbm model it could be a cat boost model or it could be a random forest model still you can use this particular method and then you can explain it so the method that we are going to look at today is model agnostic next category is global interpretability and local interpretability what is global interpretability when you have a machine learning model in place global interpretability means you at a overall level at a higher level at a global level you have some understanding about what are the features that are driving this model prediction this prediction so for example variable importance plot or a partial dependency plot are examples of global interpretability so these things explain you why in which direction this entire machine learning uh, prediction might exist so for example uh, let's take a credit call default as an example so you can have a machine learning model at a global interpretability level your model can uh, the uh, the interpretable machine learning algorithm method can tell you that okay if somebody doesn't receive salary for the last 3 months then they are high uh, then they are uh, uh, then they have a high chance high likelihood of defaulting and this is something that you would get to know from your variable importance plot maybe there is a feature called last 3 months salary and then when that is less then um, there is a high chance of that person defaulting this is at a global level and what is local interpretability local interpretability is where you take one particular data point you take one particular case and then you have a method that can explain why particular prediction has been made for that particular point and that is called local interpretability and we talked about the legality right to explanation of gdpr and local interpretability is very important for that and then the methods that we look at today will help you in local interpretability and also model agnostic so let's quickly get into the first method that we are going to look at the first method is local interpretable model agnostic explanation which is called line 
and uh, lime what lime does is as the name suggests it is interpretable and also it is model agnostic and what lime does is you can see that when there is a global model which is uh, a black box model that you cannot understand it is an opaque model what lime does is it actually builds a surrogate model so let's say this is a model that uh, differentiates between blue and red and now you have a global model you have a decision boundary that's quite nice and now what lime does is if you want explanation for this particular data point lime will make a surrogate model lime will make a model that can be interpretable for this particular set of uh, data points and then it will try to make this model as an approximation for the entire black box model and that's what lime does for example entirely you have a random forest lime will now try to make a linear regression logistic regression here and then it will try to make some prediction so this is a, this is a very vague example to say that it will build a simple model as a local approximation of the entire global model that you have built by from a sample set of data and then it will try to explain it why that particular prediction is made and it will build that local prediction local model fit that local model in such a way that it is aligned with the global prediction that is how it is made i hope it makes clear otherwise uh, you can ask more question or you can research on it lime works very well for tabular data text data image data set computer vision data so it works for different different types of data so let's have a quick look at lime demo so first line can be very simply installed using pip so pip3 install lime will get you lime installed uh, in my case i have python 3 so i am saying pip3 but uh, if you are using windows uh, and you have python 3 you can just simply say pip and uh, lime a uh, data uh, uh, package can be loaded like this lime and we are going to deal with only tabular data so i'm just loading lime tabular and then i'm using going to use a random forest so i'm loading random forest here so this is a very popular data set almost everyone who has uh, ever done any problem on kaggle or uh, ever come across any data science problem would probably know this titanic data set titanic data set has uh, one column that says survive which is to say that whether a particular person has survived or not survived based on lot of other columns like um, a name what is the class that they travel what is their gender what is their age what is their ticket fare based on all these information uh, the final there is a column that says survived or not survived and we are trying to build a model that will learn this uh, attribute and then predict whether somebody will survive or not survive simply we are going to do a lot of data pre processing for example we are dropping uh, features that are not um, required like unique features we are going to create dummy variables we are going to uh, fill missing values and then finally we have a training and test data set and then once again we build a random forest classifier and that classifier gives us 80% accuracy which is not so great uh, for a for a titanic data set because if you go on kaggle you would even find 98% accuracy but you know let's just for the sake of demo uh, i think 80% accuracy is good enough for us to move further now the model is ready as as a responsible data scientist as an ethical data scientist your next duty uh, is to build a model explainer and that's what we're going to do the first step to build a model explainer using lime is you need a prediction function so predict proba will give you uh, the predicted probability and then you are converting into float and then you are saving that function and then you are taking the training values and putting it in x so now you are creating a tabular explainer so lime tabular uh, explainer you are creating and uh, in this case in in the case in our case we are actually um, uh, giving everything as a, a numeric variable because because we have created dummy variables we are giving everything as numeric variable but if you want to make do this in the right way you have to separate uh, numeric and categorical variables you have to pass on categorical variables separately which i'm not doing it here because it's a simple demo but if you want to do that you have to do it that way so uh, you have separate categorical variables separate categorical uh, value data so in in our case it's uh, we are treating everything as numeric variable and uh, the class name is not survive survive so this is how test data looks like once the explainer is built now we need to pick one particular uh, uh, data point and then we need to say that uh, okay uh how this particular uh, prediction is going to be explained so let's take 310 uh, value 310 so if you see 310 310 is uh, survived is the actual value so let's see how the prediction is going to look like 310 so now uh, you take the chosen instance in our case 310 index is the chosen instance and you pass on that chosen instance 
with the function that we created and you want to also say how many number of features that you want a uh, line to pick up while making this prediction so in our case we have sent 10 features we actually do not have a lot of features so you can just simply say anything 10 features or anything but if you want to reduce it you can further reduce it so you can see uh, that it is saying let's run it it is saying that the person would definitely survive like 100% it would survive and it is saying the reason i am making this prediction like survive is orange not survive is blue so it's saying the reason i make this prediction is for because of these reasons um, male gender is zero which means uh, it's they are not male female gender is one which means they are female and th this is their ticket fare and you can even in fact see that because their ticket fare is greater than 31 it is trying to say that uh, this person would survive and lot of other reasons and uh, it has a very very less value for uh, not survive because of the following two, re two reasons but uh, you can understand that uh, that uh, this is making this prediction and even for somebody who is not from uh, machine learning background looking at this uh, chart you can easily make sense that okay the prediction is it will survive and the reason it is making this prediction is because this they are they are female uh, their ticket fare is greater than 31 and uh, so on so reason let's take a different data point and then try to understand in this case let's take somebody who will not survive 57 57 is yeah they will not survive and these are the values 57 so it says 80% chance that the person will not survive the actual values they will not survive and it says 89 sorry uh, 79% that they will not survive and then the reason it says that they will not survive is first that person is male and then they traveled in third uh, class uh, p uh, the passenger class is third and also their ticket fare is very less and also um, their age is around 30 so these are the reasons it says why that person will not survive probably uh, 80% but it also has some doubt saying that this person might survive because they traveled in uh, embarked they embarked in uh, class c and uh, there are some other reasons so basically it gives you a combination to understand why that person might survive and why they might not survive and why is this prediction you know goes between 80 uh, 79% to 21% and that is quite explainable like you can easily understand from here so basically the point is um, if you uh, if you have created explainer after that you just have to pick an instance and then you have to uh, send the instance value with the prediction function and the number of features that you want so if you want only three features you can say that okay based on only three features you have to explain if you have like more number of features you can but the main thing is the more number of features you keep on adding uh, it's going to be computationally expensive and that is lime it is quite uh, very very easy for you to understand so like i said if you have categorical features you have to give categorical features separately and uh, what are the advantages of lime uh, lime is model agnostic as we saw it works with the different data types it is really easy to interpret even for some uh, somebody who is from non machine learning background or even from non technical background lime is relatively faster than sharp because sharp is computationally expensive and lime also gives you one more important thing which is called local fidelity measure so at this point you might ask me how do i know the surrogate model that you build is actually a good model and that is where local fidelity measure comes into picture saying that okay the local model that i'm going to build uh it this local fidelity measure is going to tell me how good quality this local model that i have built is local the surrogate model so local fidelity measure is a nice measure to help you understand whether the local model that you built the surrogate model that you built is of good quality it has high accuracy so that you know that the local model is going to approximate well with the global black box model it has a it has some advantages uh first lime works based on a sample a sample of data right it's going to pick a sample of data and then do the local model because of which the sample might always differ and then the interpretability interpretability value could also differ so just now we saw 79% and 21% sometime it could be 80% 20% sometime it could be 85% and 15% so the interpretability value could change which could make it uh, you know unstable so when whenever there is a change in figure business might not like it the local model approximation if it is bad so we just said that uh, there is a, a value called local fidelity uh, measure and that will help us understand if the local model is a good model if the local interpretability uh, fidelity is bad 
if it has a very bad accuracy then you cannot rely the line model so you can rely on line model line interpretability only if the local model has good accuracy if it doesn't have your line interpretability is really unreliable and for a lot of beginners the first time setup could be slightly tedious because you have to uh, uh, create data set in a certain form you have to have categorical values you have to have uh, um, uh, the explainer build you have to have uh, the function prediction function build so it could be slightly tedious for first comers it's not a big disadvantage but it is you know just to call out a disadvantage despite all the disadvantages lime is really popular uh, you should definitely check it out because it's easy uh, less computationally expensive than sharp and it's easy to like uh, easy to understand so now let's move on to sharp um, before she, we see sharp demo let's understand what is sharp sharp stands for shapely additive explanation and what does it mean shapely additive explanation uses shapely values shapely values come from game theory so shapely values come out of a strong theoretical foundation from game theory so what a shapely value helps you do so if you are part of a game uh if you are let's say you uh won something um, three people have uh, played and uh, all of the three have won something but everyone has an individual contribution now shapely value is to help you divide this payout for the individual players and now replace this players with column names features and replace this payout with the prediction of an algorithm machine learning algorithm and that is where shapely values now help you explain the machine learning prediction so instead of the payout you keep um, the machine learning prediction so let's say that you went to a hotel like three friends and then you ate something and now three of you are trying to divide the payment that you have to make and that is where shapely values help helpful now instead of that um payment that you have to make let's say there is a machine learning prediction that says 93% survival now you have three columns now how you are going to separate that 93% for three columns that is going to come from shapely values and that is what uh, this uh, shapely additive explanation helps you identify so if you want to know more about uh, uh, shapely values you can click this link and then you can understand let's get into shapely demo so I, I am explaining this in my VS Code uh, Jupyter environment, but you can have a look at it. <clears throat> Sorry, anywhere. So first, you have uh, I, this is going to be uh, uh, using uh, XGBoost. So this is using a data set called uh, US Adult Income Data Set. So this data set has a lot of attributes, and then finally, it has a class value that would say whether uh, that person is making more than fifty thousand US dollars or less than fifty thousand US dollars for a year. So now. we are loading the data set and uh, as you can see uh, shape is also one pip away so you can just pip install shape and uh, import shape and once you do that uh, now load the data set once you have the data set split between train and test and then uh, because we are using xgboost we are building a train d matrix and test d matrix and this is how your um, data set looks like you can have a look at it it has age working class education marital status occupation relation all these information so now we are defining the parameters for our xgboost so based on this parameters uh, we are trying to train the xgboost once again because of the demo i did early stopping in 10 rounds but uh, ideally you would do more but because this is just a demo i just wanted to quickly show it so i'm just showing it here so basically what we are trying to see is we are seeing approximately uh, 72% accuracy here in this case so once you have the model in place shape is quite easy to get you started like unlike a uh, line you don't have to create a prediction function you don't have to do all those things um identify categorical values or all those things all you have to do is take your model um, because this is a tree based mo tree based model you have got something called a tree explainer you pass on this model inside this and then shap dot tree explainer you take this model and then this explainer will now you are going to extract shapely values from it and that you are assigning it and now you have to just pick a test value a test uh, instance for which you want to understand why the prediction has been made so in in this case uh, we are going to look at a particular value let's let's first look for 32560 is our index value for which we are going to look at so you have a tree explainer you just build the model until this it's a normal process then you have a tree explainer and from that you have shapely values extracted 
and then you're going to create a force plot. So what do you have in the force plot? You're going to pass the shape explainer's expected value from the explainer. Then you are going to pass the shapely value. Then you are going to pass the values from X display. X display, all these, all these values. Now this force plot will explain you based on these attributes, this shapely values, what is the value made, and then how it is. So as you can see, this is the base value, and you can see everything that is red color or I don't know what, like maybe like pink color, strong pink color. Everything that is in this color is going to take the value above the best value. Everything that is blue, that is going to take the value below the best value. So it's going to take the prediction value above the best value and the blue color is going to take the prediction below the best value. And as you can see, uh, it is basically trying to say that uh, this prediction, this person is going to have more than 50,000 USD as salary uh, annual income because of so-and-so reasons. Um, so I, as you can see, this is also uh, interactive. So you can see the interactive uh, visualization from this. That's what we loaded here. Um, if you see shape.energies, we just loaded the JavaScript here. So because of these so-and-so values, it is um, going to have higher value than the base value, which means the person is going to have more than 50,000 US dollars. And you can see also the real value is true. So the person is making more than 50,000. Let's look this for a different one. So this is a different value. And the actual value for this is false, which means that person is not going to make more than 50,000 US dollars. So let's change. This is for you to understand how the plot would change. If So now you can see the base value is here. And you can see these values have taken the value away from the base value. So it has, uh, these values have tried to take the value higher than base values, but you can see there are a lot of factors that are bringing the value lower than the base prediction value, average prediction value for the data set, which means because of these reasons, you are saying that the person is not going to make more than 50,000 US dollars. And that is primarily because of these values. The, while these values are trying to take the prediction above, these values have taken the prediction below, which means the pre, um, from, from the average base value, which means the person is not going to make uh, more than 50,000 US dollars. And it is the same information you can see here. So false, which means not more than 50,000 US dollars. While lime, uh, SHAP is also like Lime in this case, helps you explain the local uh, interpretability, local value. SHAP also does another good thing, which is it helps you aggregate every information, every local information, and it helps you give you a summary plot. The summary plot looks like this, which means it says uh, for this particular problem uh, to predict whether that person uh, has uh, um, more than 50,000 USD or less than 50,000 USD as annual income. Relationship is the most important variable. Age is the next most important variable. Education is the next most important variable. Capital gain is the next most important variable. So it basically takes the average of sharp values uh, for individual variable features, and then it makes this plot. And this is quite handy because now with one package, one method, you can explain both local and also global. And this is quite handy. Uh, and then a lot of times, when there is a conflict between Lime and Sharp, so that is Sharp. Sharp is usually considered uh, like we just uh, saw, to be a uh, global label because of it. the same way you can have mathematical foundation, foundation, theoretical foundation, you can also have global explanation. So some advantages of Sharp, uh, it's quite easy to get it up and running. It has a very strong theoretical foundation game theory, which makes Sharp a nice candidate for legal and compliance requirements. Because uh, if you do not have a strong foundation, unlike you know Lime, which has a uh, some unstable results. If you do not have strong theoretical foundation, it's very hard to defend your case with the legal department. But because SHAP has a strong uh, legal, a theoretical foundation, it's quite a good candidate for legal and compliance requirements. Tree Explainer is really fast. The one that we used is Tree Explainer. You can see uh, Tree Explainer. It's quite fast uh, because for tree based models. If you have tree based models, uh, which is like random for a XG boost. And if you have SHAP, uh, the good advantage is, the, I think the biggest advantage is, you have one unified package that can help you explain local, also global interpretability, unlike Lime, which is only for local interpretability. And uh, SHAP gives you visualization, interactive visualization you just saw, right? And um, you know, everyone likes interactive visualization. So that is quite good. Like it's easy for uh, business stakeholders to understand, play around with the data and understand because of its 
interactive visualization which can be uh, you know deployed on notebook jupyter notebook or if you have a blog you can publish it there are some advantages i think the biggest disadvantage uh, biggest con or disadvantage for sharp is it's really really computationally expensive it means it's very slow kernel explainer is very slow which is also model agnostic it doesn't matter uh, whether you have a linear model whether you have a tabular data whether you have any data kernel explainer is model agnostic but it is really slow and uh, it also ignores feature dependencies which means if one feature is dependent on another feature it ignores that tree explainer addresses both but it is only for tree based models it's not like truly model agnostic but it is very computationally expensive there are some solutions recently available that helps you run a uh, shapely explainer on uh, gpus uh, but you know not everyone has the luxury of running a gpu uh, within their organization for a hobby project or even for the purpose of uh, you know making a prediction explanation um, but other than you know computational uh, problem shapely is really good uh, like uh, we just said uh, uh, if there is a conflict between lime and shape shape is usually considered to be the you know more reliable solution and it is a really good solution for you to use and it is quite easy like really easy three lines you have interpretable machine